So over the years, I've been lucky enough to pick up quite a few really good patterns um, from some fantastic anglers, and this is one of those. This is a plume tip, a small dry fly, which was, which was um, given to me by Jeremy Lucas, who was the manager of the England team um, when I got my England cap on the River Ebu in Wales in 2017. Uh, it's a fantastic fly, uh, which has been developed in the competition scene, and that should tell you a couple of things. Firstly, it's very effective, and secondly, it's really useful when you're fishing in pressured water. And it's one of those flies uh, that can make fish come up when perhaps other things might fail, uh, which is the reason why it's been developed for competitions. And what I've had some really good success with, um, fishing it on those kind of warm evenings when there are a few fish popping, but you can't quite see what they're rising on. Um, sometimes they're rising, of course, on terrestrials, little gnats and midges and things like that, where you might tie on something like a Griffith's gnat. But this one, this fly, just kind of, I suppose persuades them to come and have a look a little bit more readily when they might not necessarily have come up. Um, it's also, use, also useful as an image, uh, also useful rather, as, it's also useful as an imitation uh, for an olive. So, um, you know, a little tiny olive. Now, let's just have a quick run through the materials and there are very few of them, in fact, only two. I've already put my tying thread onto the hook uh, and that's uh, a Nanofil, um, I've already put my thread onto the hook and that's uh, a Semperfly uh, Nano Silk, really, really super fine um, silk. The hook is my favorite clink hammer hook, which is a Hanak H90BL. And this is in size 18, although I do tie this fly in size 20 as well. Uh, you can tie it in a 16. In fact, if you're practicing and trying to get used to the concept of the fly, uh, a 16 is a good way to start because the 18 is a little bit fiddly. But as I said, I've just um, laid down a layer of that um, silk onto the hook. Just go around the bend and kind of put it just sort of, I suppose, level as the hook starts to taper away and go around the corner again. You just want it about there, really. Um, the other two materials that are really important in this fly, first of all, turkey bite. Now, this is a hairline turkey buyer in grey. I've struggled a little bit with this because Jeremy's original pattern uses heron hurl, which of course you can't get hold of these days. So um, finding an alternative that works has been really quite tricky, but this I think does it really nicely with one little caveat. Here's the feather that you get in the packet. And what I found is that at the top end of the feather, these bits, are just far too harsh. They're far too big and they're far too stiff. Fantastic, however, for tying nymphs. But on the other side, down at the other end, right down at the bottom at the blunt end of the feather, there are these quills here and these are soft enough and small enough so they're not very wide and form a really nice body on this fly. And the only other material is some CDC feather. Um, this is the premier stuff from um, Fish On, which is really nice, hand sorted by people like John Tyzak. It's got to be good stuff, hasn't it? Okay, as I say, I've tied on with my thread. I'm just going to bring it round the corner and let my th thread bobbin hang down. And then I'm going to take off just a couple of these grey turkey buyout feathers. You can get this in other colours, um, but this just kind of suits the look of the fly that I'm trying to tie here. I've just trimmed off two of those little bites and I'm just going to introduce them and tie them in to the shank of the hook. Just big wide open turns because you're trying to catch in all of that bite feather to the shank and then just wind down and leave yourself probably as much as you can get away with really, probably four or five mil at the head of the fly there, and because that's where your CDC is gonna go in and you need enough room to be able to work with it. I mean, there are only a couple of materials and I'm talking a lot rather than tying because it's gonna be all over fairly quickly. Now, I'm using hackle pliers to um, bring my bite around the shank of the hook and this is where you have to be a little bit careful. You can break these quite easily. So just really gently loop this round the hook 
and it's a good idea to just use your other hand sometimes to move the bobbin away so you've got enough room to get the turn round. And you're just trying to build this up. And what you'll see is the way this little turkey bite pops as you start to wind it around the hook. You get these little tiny barbs of the feathers coming off the, the main body of that bite, which is really lovely, very insect looking feature of these feathers. Probably see that a little bit more clearly in the macro photograph of this fly at the end. But when you get to about there, just let your hackle pliers hang down, shorten your thread and just catch that all in with a couple of securing locking turns of your tying thread. Just make sure that's nice and secure before you trim off. Just have to be a little bit careful with this bite material because it is quite easy to get to the point where you think you've finished and then let go and it all pings off and you have to do it again. So it can be a little bit frustrating. But I hope you can see it's a really insecty looking body. It could represent several things, which is what this fly is really tremendous for. Okay, next part of the process. For an 18, I'm going to use two fairly small, small to medium I suppose, CDC feathers. Just select a couple of nice ones. Actually, they're quite big. Will that do? Will I be able to get a... Yeah, I should be okay. Just line the tips up. It doesn't matter if they're a bit big. And I'm just going to introduce them to the top of the hook. Lay them on top like so. And you just want the tips of the CDC protruding just outside the bend of your hook because when you fold them over you need enough length to be able to make them look neat and tidy. So just a couple of mil over the end of that bend of the hook. Pinch with the other fingers, loop over the top with my tying thread and just fasten it down. I'm just going to check that for length. That looks just a wee bit short so I'm just going to sneak another couple of millimetres. Perfect. And then I'm just going to tighten everything down trim off but what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to throw these away just yet because I'm, there's one more mission that they have. So I'm just going to tidy up that head a little bit so it's all neat and tidy. Bring my tying thread up to the point where you tied the feathers in like so, so it's just there. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky with a size 18 because what I want to try to do is fold those CDC feathers back over the top of the hook like that. Ideal case scenario is you grab the tips and this is a great tip that uh, was shown to me by Stefan Jones in one of his wonderful fly tying videos. If you grab the tips and fold them back that way so they go over there you kind of get little bits of the feather that ping off and are quite attractive. But of course when it's very small it's difficult to grab those tips, but you can just about do it. There you go, look, you can see those bits that have just pinged off. And then I'm just going to get my tying thread and drop it over the top. Like so, a couple of wraps, that's all. All you really need to do is make sure that that feather is folded back over the top of the hook. And then as soon as you're happy, just kind of a couple of securing turns. Now remember, I didn't uh, throw away the waist piece of the feather. I'm going to use that to form some dubbing, but before I do so, I just want to go the other side of that plume, fold it back and put a couple of wraps around the eye. And if you can get away with it, a couple of wraps, almost like it's a parachute post on a clink, on a, um, clink hammer or something like that. So just so it kind of pops it up a wee bit. To be a bit careful with this because the thread just sort of pings off, but just want one or two turns just so you can make that look interesting and pop it up. A bit of a fro, as Phil Dixon used to say. Right, so the dubbing part of this is just ripping off a few strands, and I do mean a few, not too many at all, probably only half a dozen of that CDC feather that you previously cut away. 
and I'm just going to roll those onto my thread. It doesn't dub on brilliantly, um, but it does give you just a really useful little bit of dubbing. I'm just going to introduce a couple more strands. That's all really that you're after, kind of a centimeter of dubbing. Push that up to the top, a couple of three turns there, pull back the plume and a couple of wraps in front. And then I'm just going to grab my whip finish tool. Again, just push that plume back so you can get your tool in there and finish the fly off. And just carefully pull down, trying not to trap any of the strands in there and trim off. Just lay that down like so. So there you can see a perfect little plume tip. And I'm sure you can imagine that drifting down the river and fish coming up and attacking it. It could be a buzzer, couldn't it? It could be anything um, like those little tiny terrestrials that blow in off the land. Um, with this video, I just want to give you a bit of value for money here because in a sort of true two for one sense, let's have another look at a slight variation. So I've taken that out of the vise. I'm just going to pop in another hook and show you just a slightly different way to tie something which is just a little bit more blingy. Oops, same tying thread, so my Semperfly Nano Silk going on. And trim off. So, almost exactly the same routine. Get the thread round the corner. Kind of when it's running parallel to the, the hook point, you know you're kind of in the right place. All I'm going to do this time is I'm going to add an underbody of some holographic olive tinsel. So I'm just going to catch that in there, tie it all down so it's neat and tidy. Um, this tinsel, by the way, is that stuff. Really nice stuff. I think I got that from the uh, shop at Rutland, actually. Again, I'm going to grab my hackle pliers just to make this slightly easier, partly because it's such a small hook. And I want to bring up my tinsel, just like you're tying a buzzer, in reasonably neat turns. Again, ever so fiddly. Just pushing that bobbin away with my other hand. And I'll bring it all the way up to there. And then I'm going to lock it with a couple of turns of thread, like so. Don't worry too much, you'll understand why in a sec. That doesn't have to be all that neat and tidy. Okay, now, just gonna wind my tying thread back down to around the corner. Let it hang down and grab, this time, just a single bite from that turkey feather. Again, just a little variation catch it in once more and you'll probably notice that I've just left a little bit of a gap at the back there so you can just see that tinsel appearing from underneath the bite. Again let the thread hang down. In fact what I'm going to do just to save calamities is just do a little two turn whip finish, three turn whip finish to hold that thread in place. Again hackle pliers gently grab hold of this bite and as I turn it this time I'm just going to do rather than touching turns just open turns. So just leave a millimetre or so between the bite and there you can obviously see what happens is you can start to see the green holographic tinsel appearing underneath. Again locking thread, locking thread turns just to lock that off Trim away, neaten everything up. Now, of course, the other thing about this is it's um, it's not really that blingy at all because it's such a little tiny fly. I'm just selecting a couple more CDC feathers. In fact, these two are probably better than the two that I put on the uh, the first one I showed you. Line up those tips.
like so. You've got the natural curve of the feather, so I want that to be facing the other way. So the, the curve of the feather going down, matching the curve of the hook. And again, all I'm going to do is just a couple of mil off the end of the shank of the hook, pinch it, attach it to the top end of the hook like so. That's perfect. Couple of locking turns. Get my fingers out of the way so you can see the cut. And just tidy that up a wee bit. Again, I haven't thrown away those end pieces. I'm just gonna fold that over, pinch it with my other finger, and lock it down with the thread. You can see that sort of little bulge there that's like a, a buzzer. Just a couple of turns of thread the other side. Same routine as before. A pinch of the thread of the, uh, the uh, fronds of the CDC feather. Don't want too much of it, that's too much, they're too long. I only want a couple of those really. You can of course do this with dubbing, but the one thing I'd say is that the CDC feathers add to the buoyancy of this fly. And one of the ways that this fishes, which is really quite attractive, it almost fishes like a kind of crippled insect. So sometimes it will lie almost on its side, like it's been trapped in the surface film. And that can be a really, really devastating um, little presentation, just something slightly different. But you can see how quickly you can tie these up. I mean, I've done two in a space of no time at all, really. And the second one was more complicated than the first. Here you go. Effort number two. Now, not wishing to uh, go too far with this, but actually, one of the things you may also have noticed is before you fold that, CDC feather back over the top so it's facing that way, this makes rather a sp splendid looking F fly. So let's whack this one out of the vise as well. Pop in a bigger clink hammer hook. This is again a Hanak 390BL. This one's a, a 14. Different tying thread. This one is an Ato Textream in olive, so much more meaty thread. And I'm going to create a fly which I got from my mate Glenn Poynton, who is a fantastic wild fish angler. And he showed me this pattern when we were fishing on some rivers up around the Dove a couple of years ago. It's called a Calder Cannon. And he in turn got it from the Wales angler Gwilym Hughes. I'm not sure how close this is to Gwilym's original pattern. Um, but this is the way the fly that Glenn gave me presents. Now this Techstream 80 standard thread, whoops, hang on, what am I doing here? There you go. Is what forms the body of the fly. I'm trying to show you the bobbin there. I won't bother, I'll show you it at the end. But yeah, this forms the body of the fly. Even more simple to tie than the other one. You just build up thread layers. Uh, again, you could potentially put in a wee bit of tinsel under this or use a rib maybe to give you a little bit more attraction. But I have to say, having fished this, it really doesn't need it. Some of the little insects you see in the river are ever so delicate. And these thread bodied presentations can be really fantastic. And that's all the body this one needs. Again, in this case, I'm going to Grab two CDC feathers once again, lining up the tips as we go. Again, flip them over so that they match the curve of the hook. Measure them up, perhaps not quite as far over the back as in the previous tie. Pinch and loop. And on this occasion, Rather than using the CDC to provide the, the dubbing for the head, I'm just going to grab a little bit of grey squirrel. Just a few fibres to create a head. Something really quite straggly, like so. 
it's just a little bit too much dubbing. Take a little bit off, just a pinch. And just dub that on quite loosely. Whip finish. Stick a bit of varnish or something on there if you need to. To be honest, I don't tend to bother with these threads because you can pull them quite tight as it is. And the only thing I will then do, excuse me, rattling the uh, scissors, and things around, scissors and things around, is just grab my dubbing teaser and just brush out a few of those dubbing fibres. So we end up with that. Now that is a fantastic fly. And again, different sizes that you can tie of it. Um, 16s, 14s, down to 12s if you need to, and going in the other direction, it's cracking in an 18 as a midge pattern. But using the same kind of theory, I've showed you three different flies, all of which deserve a place in your box if you fish dries, particularly in those evening rises. Um, three really interesting patterns, the plume tip from Jeremy Lucas, a slight variation with a little bit of green tinsel underneath the turkey bite, and this one, the Calder Cannon, which comes from the fly box of Glen Poynton via Gwilym Hughes. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the ties. I hope you get on okay with them if you have a go. And as usual, if you take them out on the river, I hope they bring you a few fish. Thanks ever so much for watching. Mm -hmm.